Hello everyone and welcome. Today, as you can see, I am, well, releasing Webify. Completely customizable, procedural, real-time, incredibly fast. It will add webs to whatever you want, right? The ways to get this is through either the Blender Universe for the free demo version, right? It will be plenty, it will be enough to add to your scene and, well, add webbings to objects you want, you just won't have all the customization options, right? So the other way is to get it from my Gumroad, then you'll have the fully customizable one, and later on in the Blender Universe Premium, this will also be accessible, right? And we'll have a live stream for that on Friday to share the release details and to answer any questions you may have. So the live stream link will be listed in the description below as well, in case you're wondering what that's going to be. Right, so how do you get this into your own file? Well, I'll show this with a new file, of course. There we go. Just hit File, Append, go to the Webify blend file that you downloaded, and then go to Object, and let's hit Webify, right? And then it will add everything you need, pretty much, right? So by default, you can just turn your web collection off. It is using those. You can tweak them in the geo nodes, but if you don't want them to be visible, just uncheck that collection, right? And this is everything you need pretty much, right? So I set this to be the default dimensions of like um, a meter, right? So that is quite, quite, quite the average kind of web size, I guess, I'm not sure. Uh, but you can just scale everything up and it works just fine as well, right? Imagine you have a large building or something you want to add that to. Let's add a new cube. So you can scale that up and you can just add that to the collision collection. And there we go. And now it's going to interact with the web at the same time, right? So let's just delete this. There we go. It will interact with that web just beautifully, right? And you can just draw those curves a little different if you need some more at the top there, at the bottom. You know how it goes. You can just add that at the start or at the end, whenever, right? So that is really easy to use. Just remember you've got that object collision collection that will take care of which objects will be webified. So how this works? Well, quite easy, very customizable. I got a little scene set up here to just showcase it a little bit, right? So what I can do is let me just delete this right from the start and I could just draw a curve now, right? Whatever curve, I'm in curve mode in the draw mode, of course, and I can just draw a curve and it will connect our little spider web to the objects that you have set in your collision collection, right? I can draw as much as I want, as much as I want, and it will connect it beautifully, right? So you can see that we even got these little, uh, little bigger webs, those round webs spawning, and well, you can choose whether or not you want those. And I quite liked it to at least add it in there because it looks like a lot of fun. So let's go over some of the customization stuff because that is the interesting part, let's be honest. So we have web density, of course. How many of those webbings do you want? Do you want this to be crazy filled with spiders and webbings? Then you can do so, right? So that is a density. Now we have the web seed as well, of course, in case you just want to just wanna try out some different styled webs, okay? It will connect it back up beautifully and it will even connect, as you can see, to those little circular webs, beautiful. And I have a tertiary web density. Now each of these densities, quaternary web density, they're all gonna make a little bit of a different look, right? So if I crank up this secondary web density, it's gonna add random density everywhere. But if I increase the quaternary, yes, exactly, to higher levels, you can see that it's adding more and more on those lines that are already there, which can give you a very interesting look as well, as you can see. Right, so that's different kind of spider webs, I guess. So that is the densities. You can change the seeds, of course. Web thickness, I crank this up quite high now, otherwise it's gonna be a little bit harder to see, but it's more realistic to crank this down, of course. Web dripping, very important. If I increase this, we have more drip in the in the web, right? And if I decrease it or increase this, sorry, we will have more of a straight web. You can even make this go upwards. Let's say your gravity reverses in your scene. You can then do this as well, right? Personally, a little bit of drip is good. Now we have the circular web probability. I told you before, we have the circular webbing. Sometimes you want them, sometimes you may not. If you don't, just crank the probability all the way down. And if you want a lot of them, just crank it all the way up, right? And it will add more and more and more. Beautiful. So then we have the scale of those, and you can see that the webbing interacts with that as well. If I decrease this all the way, if I increase it, you can see that those endpoints are going to try to connect to different parts. Beautiful. 
Now we have our hanging web probability as well. And what that is, is basically those loose webbings at the bottom, right? Sometimes our web snaps. When you uh, when humans go through it with their little sticks in, in the forest, bullying spiders, for example. And so that is, well, hanging webs. You can increase, decrease that probability. If you like it a lot, increase it. If you don't, decrease it, right? It's very basic. Now we have the noise scale of that, of course, as well. You just customize it a little bit. If you want it more random, more chaotic, crank that up and otherwise down. All right, so then the strength then as well. And now there's even a nice little addition that I added, which is the droplets, right? Sometimes it rains, it gets moist outside. There's like this little mist hanging over, over the grass fields. And in that case, you can add a little bit of droplets on your on your webs, right? You can't really see it right now, but if I crank down my, or let's just increase the droplet scale first to higher values. You can see that we're actually adding a little bit of droplets and let me set the density a bit lower, All right? So you can see that we're actually adding some droplets, some water droplets on there. And the beauty of this is, is that if we just crank down that thickness to something that matches better with real skills, you can see that it looks more and more like actual webbings that actually has a little bit of droplets on it, right? It's amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, so use it for sure for whatever you need, right? And then go back into drawing mode and draw more of your webs. And now for the best part, where is completely real time, right? So let's go to viewport for a sec. I can move my, my objects around and the web will stay connected at all times. Scale this up as well, scale this down. It's going to be procedural and work incredibly fast, right? I can even just duplicate this and it's gonna connect to more and more and more, right? So that is the beauty of this generator. It works incredibly fast. Well, that's the background, right? And it doesn't have to be a cube, of course. It can be your own object. It can be whatever. It can be Suzanne, right? Let's add Suzanne in there. Let's add it to the collision. Beautiful, there we go. So now it also collides with Suzanne. Isn't that amazing? All right, so it's very easy. It's very tweakable. And I hope you guys can use this for, for good, for, for fun, making fun scenes. Please do share it if you do, right? So all that you need to remember is that you have a collision collection, right? In my geometry node setup, it is going to refer to a collision collection. So everything you want to have in that collision collection, everything that you want to have webs attached to, just drop that in its own little collision collection, right? which is going to be easy, I guess. All right, so that's everything you need to know, pretty much. One more thing is when we look into our scene, you can see that we are also having three webs, right? Let me, let me, let me add those to the webs. There we go. There we have three different webs, and those webs are actually used for this little generator, right? For example, if I change this one, you can see that is... Well, I'm not sure which one it is, but if I change one of those webs, the X and the Y, the rings, let me find one that is actually used. There we go. You can see that it is actually changing in the web generator as well, All right? So you can change how this looks completely. Isn't that crazy, All right? So that's the final thing that it well it comes with at least for the the premium kind of version. You'll have those webs included as well. And, well, you'll be able to change and tweak your own little circular webs, right? So those geometry nodes are completely included. It's amazing. Um, have fun with it. And thanks for watching. If you like it, leave a like, a comment, subscribe. I will enjoy every one of those. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.